Hey guys, how you doing today? Gonna sit down and do a, another quick video. Gonna try to keep it quick uh, on how to program your Spectrum DX9. Uh, if you've got a uh, you know latest version DX8, Generation 2, DX7, DX6, uh, this is going to apply to those radios as well. But I'm going to show you how to program these lemon stabilizer plus receivers in your radio. Um, there are videos on how to program the older version, which will quickly go over the differences. They look very similar, um, but uh, I didn't see a video for the new ones, a stabilizer plus. So I'm going to do that for my friends and uh, a few people online to uh, make it easy for them. So first off, I want to thank um, Dayla66, Nigel. He posted this in the uh, Lemon uh, Stabilizer thread, um, and it was a big help to me. He's been you know, a fantastic resource online. Um, he also credits uh, Andy Coons over at Spectrum and uh, Horizon. That guy's a genius. He's helped me many times and others on this. So I want to give those guys credit on this before I get started. At any rate, uh, let's take a quick look at these two stabilized receivers. Now, these are the lemons, and I'll get closer so you can see them. Um, and I have been using this one quite a bit for the last few years on some of my planes and setting up uh, planes for a couple of the guys. And you'll notice this one and this one look pretty similar. Uh, this one has a satellite port. And this one has a little toggle button. This is the new one you're going to get when you order these. I believe you can still get both of them, uh, but this is the new Stabilizer Plus, uh, which has a couple other couple features like six axis stabilization as well as auto leveling and a few other features. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into those features. I'm primarily going to stick to just setting these up in the radio uh, because. There are already some videos on these features that do a great job talking about the features and how to bind them and how to uh, do different things with them. But I just want you to see the difference here. This is the older one that uh, I've been using, and this is the new one that you're going to get. Um, so we're going to program this new one because it's got some changes. Uh, one is the, the thing I notice is that when you set it up with a plane that has landing gear and flaps, or six channels. Um, what we've been doing, uh, what I've been doing, is I've not been connecting anything to the gear channel, this channel five, because that is a no-no. That is used in these receivers to turn the gyro on and off. And uh, so you can't hook your landing gear up to this channel five, which you're used to doing on regular non-stabilized receivers. So what we do is after we bind them, and program them, we hook the gear up, at least I was hooking the gear up to this bind port, which is this seventh channel down here. Um, and I'll get close so you can see that. Uh, this, this one down here is where we bind the receiver. And when we're done binding, I've been hooking my gear up to this one down here. Uh, that's just the way they have the firmware program that this, this uh, channel here does two things. It allows you to bind and after the bound is done, it allows you to set it up in the radio to use this as your seventh channel. So that's what I've been doing, and it's been working great for years. And all of a sudden, a friend of mine got one of these, and I tried doing that, and the gear wouldn't work. And um, we tried several receivers, and it, you know, it, we knew it wasn't the receiver because several of the receivers did the same thing. So we couldn't get the gear to work on that channel on several different airplanes. I did some digging and found out, thanks to these guys, uh, that there is a difference in these new receivers where the gear, basically, um, a lot of the gears aren't working because of a low impedance issue. Um, so the longer the short of it is, there's a workaround, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the gear up here where the flaps were going, and we're going to put the flaps down where the gear was, and that solves our problem. But how do we do that in the radio? That's what we're going to talk about. So again, this is setting up a Spectrum radio. I'm using a DX9 to work with all the channels on the new Lemon Stabilizer Plus. 
um, primarily how to set up the radio so that we can run the gear up on auxiliary one up at the top and put the flaps down on auxiliary two down at the bottom on the bind port so this is how we're doing it uh, first step is to set up the radio uh, with a new aircraft and we are setting it up let me go in here and do this and we'll do it so you can see it we're going to add a new model everybody's familiar with how to add a new model i'm sure and the first thing we're going to do when we have our new model is we're going to go down to aircraft type okay so scroll down to aircraft type give it a push and we're going to switch the wing from normal to one aileron one flap now this is if you're using a Y adapter on the ailerons, okay? Uh, this is not gonna work if you are not using a Y adapter on the ailerons. And if you are used to plugging your individual ailerons into individual channels, this is not gonna work for you. You must put your aileron on a Y adapter. Uh, that's primarily what I've been doing in most of my aircraft to use all six channels um, so that I can have flaps and uh, retracts. So, that's what you want to use. One aileron, one flap, and you want your ailerons on a Y adapter. Okay, we're going to leave the tail set the normal, and we're going to back out of there. This enables it so that in the radio we have a flap system. You know, what we'll do real quick is we'll go to System Setup, choose Yes, come down to Channel Assign, okay? Uh, this is what we're going to do before we go in and mess with the flaps, okay? What we need to do is we need to go down here to number six where it says auxiliary one, okay? Um, we need to set that to oop, auxiliary two, okay? There it is, all the way down. Um, I know it's a little misleading using these names. That that's just you know what Spectrum uses. Uh, but basically, what we want is we want it to read like this. Um, we want it to read throttle, throttle, aileron, aileron, all the way down. The change we're making is down on number six. We're changing auxiliary one to auxiliary two, and on seven we're changing auxiliary two to flap. And that's all we need to do. Now on this next page, let me go back to previous because uh, I want to make sure you guys know that I went all the way down and clicked on next here. On this next page, which is a channel input config, we are actually going to now change the gear, okay, over to where we want to, and again, ignore that I'm saying the word gear, but I'm just using that as a reference. This is basically, we're assigning a switch right here to how we want to turn the stabilizer on and off. I'm going to use the E switch here. So I'm toggling the E switch to tell it to use E, and I'm using that. I am then going over to auxiliary two, and I am saying, what do I want to use for my landing gear? This is confusing, I know. So don't, don't worry about anything other than we're going to use our regular gear switch, which is the A switch for that. Um, so most of us use this A switch, two-way switch for our landing gear. That's what I'm using. If you have a different two-way, you know, two-position switch you want to use, that is fine. Uh, but that is what I'm using for this video, this A. So now what's happening is number seven, auxiliary two is on A. Number six, auxiliary one is on NA. Number five, gear is on E. Okay, that's all we need to do. We can back out of that. And there's only one last step to do. It, and I was talking about setting up your flap switch. So we'll need to go down and on our main screen go to flap system flap system is available now because we chose that single aileron um, we are now going down to where it says inhibit and we are now choosing a switch we want to use for our flaps okay i like to use the three position switch which is labeled d here so that's what i'm going to use uh, i'm choosing d 
And then I want to actually go over here to the flap uh, positions, position zero, and I need to actually run this up to about 60. If I don't do this and leave those at zero, then when I hit the switch, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to think something's wrong. So I want to run up position zero to like 60, position one, leave it at zero, in position two, I'm going to go the other direction and bring it down to minus 60. Um, I'm not going to do 100 because I don't know some, you know, some planes uh, that, that might stress out the flap servo. So this is a good starting point. 60, 0, 6, negative 60 for these positions. The reason why is if I don't do that and I bind and then I test this flap here, if those are at zero value, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to think I did something wrong in the radio. So I have to sign values in here. If you work with the flap system before, this is something you're used to doing. Um, you might even want to go through. And I like to set my speed on here to two seconds. That's for the, uh, you know, the servo movement. Slows things down a bit. Uh, makes it scale looking. Uh, but this is what we need to do. We can now back out of here. And we are ready to bind and we can then go through and check all of our switches on here. Uh, the main thing is what we've done now is we have programmed the radio so that we can put our throttle here normally. Uh, this is where the throttle is going to go. Let me make this easier to see. We have our bind, we have our throttle, ailerons, elevator, rudder, channel five, we don't plug anything into this at all. And up here, channel six, auxiliary one is where we're gonna be putting our gear now. We used to put it down here. We are now gonna be putting it up here. Our gear goes up there. And then our flaps will go at the bottom where we had the bind plug in. So again, we have a bind plug here to bind it up. When we're done binding, we remove the bind plug and then we are going to be putting our flaps down here. I used to put the gear down here and again, because of the low impedance issue, the gears weren't working, but the flaps work fine on here. So that's what we'll do with how we set it up in the radio. This will work fine. I'm not going to get into the switches or the gain pots or anything like that. There are some great videos on that. Um, just do a, do a YouTube search for Lemon Stabilizer Plus. That'll all come up for you. At any rate, uh, you can bind up now to what we have set up in this radio, and it will work fine. I've tested it on both... Uh, you know, tail dragger, uh, tricycle landing gear. Uh, this is the airplane that I discovered the problem in. A buddy of mine just pulled it out of the box, wanted me to build it. So I can't get the gear to work on there. Now with the new programming, it is working beautifully. I've got the gear up here where the flaps used to be, the flaps down at the bottom where the bind plug is, and it works beautifully. Um, so. If you follow those instructions, it'll work beautifully for you. We had a couple of guys at the field that thought there was something wrong with the uh, receivers and sent them back. I thought the same thing until I dug a little deeper. So I hope this video was helpful. Happy flying. Be safe. Thank you.